Welcome to the basic tutorial on how to set up an interactive soundtrack for our game audio middleware called Psy. The tool we will be using for this is called the Psy Editor. It's part of our SDK and it is available for both Windows and Mac. We will set up a simple soundtrack containing just one theme and that theme will be the danger theme you might have heard earlier in our video where I demonstrated the Psy player for Unity. At this point I have already created a new folder on my hard drive and I copied all the audio files we will be using into subfolders. The first step is to create a new project file that I will store in the root directory of our audio subfolders, which is important as the Psy editor needs the project folder to be self-contained. Now our project is initialized and we are ready to add a new theme. We can do so either in the project menu or by right clicking in the project tree view and we choose add theme from the context menu. Now you might be wondering why we see our project hierarchy twice in two different panels. This will become important later when we listen to segment transitions, but for now just ignore that and concentrate on the left tree view here. Clicking left on the theme node opens the theme properties panel where we can control how our theme shall behave at runtime. And as you can see there's quite a few options here, but for now I'll just change the name of the theme to danger. What you can see in the project tree view is that our new theme already received a group node named default group. The concept of groups is intended primarily for different groups of instrumentation, like when you have a collection of segments where your theme is played once with brass and another played with strings, you don't want Psy to jump between those instrumentations too frequently. Instead you would create a group for each instrumentation and then use the weighting slider in the theme properties panel to control the frequency of group switches. Anyway, in this tutorial we will keep it simple and just add all our segments to the default group. I do this by right clicking on the group node and I choose add segments from WAV files. Clicking on a segment node will load that segment to the playback section above where I can press the play button and listen to it. And as you can hear, we really kept the segments short for the danger theme so that it will adapt as quickly as possible to the intensity of the gameplay. Now the first thing we need to do after we added new segments is to make sure that Psy will get the timing right later at runtime. So to visualize that, I have loaded a segment into an audio editor. This is Audacity. And as you can see, a segment not only consists of a loopable region, which sounds like this, But we also have a short upbeat region up front. This is what we call the pre-beat region. And accordingly, behind the loopable region, it's the post-beat containing decaying sounds and reverb. And what we have to do now is we need to tell Psy how long each region is. And as I have already marked the loopable region within Audacity, I can easily read out the number of samples for the pre-beat region. In this case, it's 8,500. Depending on your workflow, these values might be the same for a large number of segments. In this case, I can select or deselect their nodes in the left tree view. I can also hold down shift and select a whole bunch at once. And as soon as I leave the text field, I have the option to apply the change to all the selected segments. And when we're done, we can deselect all nodes by right clicking and choosing clear selection. One way to check if we got the pre-beat and post-beat values set up correctly is to select the same segment once in the left tree view, that's the source tree, and once in the right tree view, that's the target tree. And now I have the option to listen to how it will sound at runtime when Psy plays the selected segments in sequence. For a longer segment, it's more convenient to hit the play transition button below. 
that will start the playback from a cue point as set down here. That's in this case two seconds before the target segment starts. Now the next step in our authoring process would be to tap Psy which segments it may use for which parts of your theme. We need at least one segment that Psy may use to start the theme out of silence. Then we need a couple of segments to choose from while the theme is playing. And finally we need at least one segment that's suitable to end the theme. Accordingly I can check or uncheck the start, middle or end flags for each segment in the properties panel. Our danger theme is quite percussive, so in this example most of the middle segments are also suitable to start a theme with. The last three segments contain variations of the theme's ending and will sound wrong when played in between, so I will disable their middle tag. So at this point we would technically already be able to export the soundtrack to our game project. But one important feature of Psy is still missing and this is the ability to adapt the intensity of the music to the intensity of your gameplay. All we need to do to make this work is we need to classify the musical intensity level of each segment to a value between 1 and 100%. What I did to make this easier is I chose the file names in a way that our segments will be imported in ascending order based on their intensity. So at the very top we have segments of low intensity like this one. Segments with medium intensity that I would classify to have 50% intensity sound like this. down to the segments with the highest intensity, like this. So now I will adjust the intensity slider for each segment and then we are ready to export the soundtrack to our game project. When we're done, we choose the export function from the file menu and we will be asked where to store the binary data file that will hold the configuration data for our soundtrack. This is the single file that your game code needs to load to control the whole soundtrack. Now, it's very important that this file is stored within the resources folder of your Unity project, as this is the folder Unity uses for the dynamic loading of local content. The export process will also create a WAVE subfolder and will copy all the audio files from our PSY project folder to our Unity project. Another thing to keep in mind is that within Unity the import settings for each of our audio files need to be set up correctly. For instance we need to disable the 3D sound flag and we need to set the load type to stream from disk. The Psy editor will try to set this automatically for us by altering the meta files in your Unity project. At this point these files are yet to be created by Unity so we will be asked to switch to the Unity application once. After some seconds Unity has imported our new assets and we can switch back to the Psy editor and click OK to finish the export. <laughs> 